In the book, you also talk about that you didn't like how the animals were treated. Let me right. read a portion from your book about food deprivation. You say SeaWorld says that its animals receive all of their food regardless of how they perform throughout the day. This is false. I know of whales whose food base usually ranged from 180 to 250 pounds per day, being restricted to as little as 59 pounds of food because such a form of, quote, behavior modification would sound barbarous to human audiences. The practice has been kept secret. It would not be good for businesses to say that the stars of the show were not given food in order to make them perform, but it has happened. I have been part of inflicting the policy myself at the request of a supervisor. What was going on? So they would punish the whales? Exactly. So there's only two acceptable reasons you should withhold food from an animal. One is medical, and the second is if that animal just simply refuses to eat. You try multiple times and they won't eat, which is usually reflective of a medical condition. But uh, when you withhold food, just because the animals are choosing not to cooperate or they're doing the incorrect behavioral uh, you know, behavior you've Action, asked yep. for, you know, that's just poor training, that's uh, uh, poor management. And whenever those decisions were made, a manager had to approve it. So it wasn't like a rogue trainer that just went off and said, I'm going to cut this animal's face today. You had to pick up a phone, call a manager and say, hey, listen, they were poor behaviorally. Can we grind their food? And they would say yes or no. Uh, SeaWorld obviously is not pleased with your book and revealing this. And in fact, they take issue with many of the things that you say. Here is their rebuttal to your claims sure. about food deprivation. They say our policy is simple. Killer whales receive an amount of food determined by our veterinarians based on their age, sex, breeding status, overall health, and activity level. Any departure from that amount of food requires a veterinarian's approval. Right. And the, it, it's so easy to uh, explain those things away. For example, if you have a whale that's been uh, performing poorly, uh, not cooperating, and say their base was 250 pounds, you can very easily the next day say, I've dropped, say it's Kasaka, I've dropped Kasaka's base from 250 pounds to 180 pounds because she seems a little overweight. Hmm. So reading between the lines, it's she's not cooperating the way we want her to cooperate, so we're going to drop her food amount. Um, SeaWorld says that they, they don't believe your story, and they even say that you yourself um, contradicted the story that you now tell in your memoir by this tweet that was sent out about a year ago, February 11, 2014. Here is your tweet. You say, any trainer that held back food from a whale was a poor trainer and using techniques not taught to us in the sea world system. Right. How do you explain that contradiction? Well, and I don't believe it is a contradiction because it's exactly what I just explained how, you know, it is a poor, a poor trainer. It but is that a, doesn't sound like you were blowing the whistle there. That sounds yeah. like you were defending the choice of all of the trainers. What I was defending was that as a trainer, as a good trainer, you should not be withholding food from whales for behavioral reasons. Like I said, if it's medical or if it's because the whale simply refused to eat and you've tried multiple times, you've done all that you can do. And that's, and, and you know, I was fortunate enough that it, throughout my career I learned from some great trainers, um, but there are trainers in the system that are not very behaviorally strong and uh, they don't follow 